Hello beautiful people. I guess I should start by saying that this one is going to be a bit personal. So if you have time to spare and you're curious about me, then just grab a drink and relax. Yesterday I had a bit of an emotional day and today I'm still thinking about it and I guess now I'm talking about it. It feels right to talk about it. Maybe because one of the things I'm advocating for is to not run away from your emotions in a time where so many people are trying to hide it or sedate themselves and try to avoid being uncomfortable. I look at emotions as something to explore, almost looking at introspection as a spiritual journey where you get to discover yourself. And by discovering yourself, you can be yourself and that's how you let go of insecurities people that say vulnerability is a weakness they are insecure and scared to be vulnerable because the reality is we look at it in nature as well is that displays of vulnerability are a display of strength or trust that's why you know animals showcase their necks or their bellies and be vulnerable with the close ones or lion can sleep in the middle of the day and allow themselves to be vulnerable because they know they are strong. So you can look at it as me showing off. I get a lot of messages and comments from people online on a daily. And most of the time, I don't really care. And that's not because I'm some sort of careless dude or whatever. It's that I don't think strangers on the internet should be the ones determining your self-worth and value. And yes, they can judge your work and the things that you put out there. But on a personal level, that's something that you should determine. And I think that's the trap that a lot of people fall with social media and especially content creators. That they go in craving that validation and then they start giving themselves a sense of importance when those positive comments come through and that gets to them. But if you care about the positive comments, then you have to care about the negative ones too. And that's a dangerous rabbit hole to go in. Yesterday, I obviously cared. In a way, it was a compounding thing of a month that yesterday just tipped over, where a type of message and comment uh, I kept seeing, and usually coming from a mother that or father that has a young son or some young man saying that, I want to be like you one day. I'm looking up to you or I'm... Um, giving you as an example for my son or my son feels or doesn't feel alone in this world because there's people like you out there and I definitely care about it oh I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it the idea of a lot of people looking up to you is already incredible but to understand why is so meaningful to me I guess I have to take you to the start where most of us start remembering things from the age of four and five. That's on average. And some of you might know that I grew up with our parents and I moved, got moved from house to house. From the age of five to 10, when I ran away, I, I lived with my biological grandfather. Which sounds like a good idea to be taken in by family, but he was a notorious alcoholic and extremely violent. And those five years definitely shaped who I am. And I want to take to this particular instance when I went into first grade at school and I got three kids who bullied me and I went home and tried to tell him about it. And I got beaten so bad that I couldn't sit down for three weeks because I embarrassed them with my child problems. So the next time uh, a kid tried to bully me, I just snapped his arm in half. And that instance, I guess, is where I got excluded from almost everywhere. That kids at school or kids in the neighborhood were told by their parents that they're not allowed to talk or engage with me because I'm a problematic, feral child that comes from a very problematic environment. And I couldn't be at home because it was a daily occurrence from physical violence to being molested and being 
beaten and sent on the streets to beg for money and all sorts of things. That's why I ran away at 10. So being a kid who couldn't be at home until it was too dark so I can just sneak to sleep and no one wanted to talk to me, I ended up spending most of my childhood in the local forest. And that's where I call myself a forest child because that's really my family. I observed the patterns of nature. I would look at, you know, birds hatching and going every day and I befriended the stray dogs around. And I smile because despite of the horrendous circumstances, it allowed me to develop the mind I have today. I observed the patterns of nature and I observed a lot of people from afar, which now I have a name for it. I trained my mirror neurons to get genuine empathy, not the performative nonsense that people talk about, and allowed me to speak a language a lot of people don't speak anymore, where I can understand people without them even having to tell me things. And as I grew up, that particular ability has not been great in education as I was not great at standard education because I was too curious and I had too many questions and I could sense bullshit and I would call you out and get myself in trouble. So the only place that actually celebrated my alternative way to look at the world was uh, being a criminal. And that's why I spent about 10 years of my life, between 15 to 25. I'm going to make it short. And being able to see these patterns work this way, it was pretty good. At the age of 25 is where I went forward and tried to take my own life. And it's that's why I have this level of rejection towards the toxic positivity thing that people put out nowadays. Because that is the thing that got me. It was not the trauma. It was not the abuse. It was actually at a period of my life where things were going pretty well. My life was filled with drugs and women and party six out of seven days and I felt empty and unhappy and when I tried to speak about it everyone would tell me no life is amazing you sure this is the best moments of your life and because it didn't feel like that everyone was telling me how amazing it is that is the thing that pushed me so that's why I have a problem I don't have a problem with nice people I have a problem with people lying to make themselves feel good or look good not knowing the extreme danger of their behavior because toxic positivity is gaslighting. You're not a good person. You're extremely selfish. You're either being real to someone, or it doesn't mean you have to be rude about it, but lying to them, it's going to do way more damage. Anyway, after I surprisingly survived the incident when I was 25, the only way I could mentally move past it was to acknowledge it as successful. I was successful at getting rid of that person, a person that was created way back when I was nine in order for me to survive the environment I was in. But it was not me. And that's where all of the resentment came through. So it started a journey of trying to discover who I am underneath all of that. And the thing that literally saved my life was the good feeling I had when I helped someone. And I was like, oh, there is value to what used to be my struggle, my alternative way to look at the world and me being quite strange and you know not being able to fit in into society and normal education is the same thing that I can help people with. Because now I have all of this knowledge about, you know, neurobiology and biology and psychology and all of these things and I can nerd out about science stuff for days but reality is you know, with almost everyone I worked with and I work with rich people with astrophysicists with scientists with psychologists that pay me to people who were ex-prisoners and murderers and so on and really it's not all of my information that I gathered that seems to be the highlight. The most common thing I get is that 
they feel seen. They don't feel alone. And really, that was my problem. And I think that's the problem a lot of people have is that they might be surrounded by people, but they don't feel seen because no one really pays attention. And a lot of people have masks on. So they feel alone in their struggles. So someone to allow them to be themselves and see them seems to be extremely empowering for many. And that's arguably the success of the scientifically savage lifestyle approach. I guess this is a valuable piece of advice for anyone, especially young men nowadays, but a lot of people seem to have this issue. Seek intimacy. And I say young men because often we are being told that intimacy is just linked with sex, which is not. We need to look at intimacy as the word into me see. Someone that can see you without the mask, without the bravado, without you having to hide your insecurities, to allow yourself to be vulnerable, to generally connect with someone. Because that level of engagement can save your life, that you don't have to put on a show for everyone. And you can find intimacy with other men or with whatever. You have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. And if you don't feel strong enough to be vulnerable, then start working on your biology first. You know, get good sleep, start working out, eat right, start putting a bit of care into your appearance. Allow yourself to feel strong enough to then be vulnerable to allow others to connect with you because then you can use all of that energy to empower you even further. I guess that's why I am who I am and I do what I do the way I do it, is that I became the person I needed growing up. And rather than continuing to allow that resentment and the things I had to go through to hold me back or for me to justify my anger and everything else, the way I can make it worth for that kid who survived all of that is to be the person he needed for others. Most of the content that you see me put out there is just things I wish someone would have told me a while back. And that's why I don't care about these losers that want to be stuck in a victim mentality and complain. I don't care. Your existence means nothing to me. Like, just get out of the way. There are a lot of people out there who are incredible and ha could do so much. And this defeatist attitude of just giving up, oh, poor me, I don't care. Step out of the way. My people are the ones that want to discover what is going on and then do something about it. That's simply, that's the line in the sand is people who ask, but why is this happening? Like, mm -hmm. Now what? Those are my people. If you just want to bitch about things, step out of the way. You're not going to make it anyway. And to be honest, my people will get me and I am thankful for being able to provide a degree of hope to ones that might need it. Protect your peace.